morning, everybody, and welcome again to our service of worship. Uh, my name is Sue, and I'm the minister here at the Long Beach Parish. And I pray that you have had a great week. I know it's in hard times as we uh, looked at uh, all that's happening around, especially Victoria. But isn't it wonderful that we have a great God who watches over us and cares for every aspect of our lives. And we've been looking through the book of Acts at the power that the Holy Spirit has given to the disciples and to those who uh, have become his witnesses and have come to faith. And many thousands came to a faith in Jesus. And we continue looking at that. And the verse from Acts chapter 10, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. And we are all accepted by him and forgiven and loved and cherished. Isn't that wonderful uh, to know that? Well, let's continue as we pray together. Life-giving God, we gather in your presence to offer you thanksgiving and praise for all that you have done for us through the life, death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We have been set free, free from the power of sin that leads to death, free to follow the leading of your Holy Spirit, free to love you with all our heart and soul and strength, free to worship May your Holy Spirit inspire our praise and our prayers. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us and within us and to the word you have for us today. To you alone, life-giving God, belongs all praise and honour and glory and blessing, now and to the end of times. Amen. And would you like to join me in singing that wonderful hymn, how great thou art, a reminder of all that Christ has done for us on the cross and what it means for us throughout eternity.
Toby, it's good to see you again. Oh, hello, Grandpa. You're a great Zoomer now. Thank you, Toby. Now, I've just come off the phone from your mother, and she is not very happy. Oh, dear. What has my sister done now? I don't think it's what your sister has done, Toby. Maybe you can solve the missing uh, mystery of the missing cooking chocolate. <laughs> but I'm not a detective, Grandpa. Very funny, Toby. Now, your mother needs that cooking chocolate for a cake she's making for Sue and Ken, who are celebrating the arrival of twin grandbabies. Do you know anything about it? Why would I know anything about it, Grandpa? Because you are someone who rather likes chocolate. I do, Grandpa. It is delicious. Especially cooking chocolate. Mmm, okay. So you do know something about it? Well, put like that, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Come on, Toby, spit it out. <laughs> Can't, Grandpa. I've eaten it. Mmm. So, why did you lie to me and your mother, Toby? It was only a little white lie, Grandpa. There isn't such a thing as little white lie, Toby. But Roy said white lies are okay, especially if you cross your fingers behind your back. Hmm. Well, Roy is not telling the truth, Toby. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, you see, Toby, you are either telling the truth about something or you're telling a lie. It's as simple as that. Well, all right, Grandpa. And while we're talking about your mother being cross, I gather the vicar has spoken to her about her figs. Her figs? Someone has been going into her garden and helping themselves to her prize figs. And they have nearly all gone. Oh, what a shame. Mmm. I thought that too. I wonder why the vicar rang up your mother to talk about this. I wonder too. Your mother did tell me that you have suddenly gotten into exercising. Long walks, I hear. Mm. Yes, Grandpa. I love my long walks. Mmm. That's very surprising for a boy who normally doesn't walk anywhere makes a fuss when they can't be driven around. So, would you like to know what I learned at school this week, Grandpa? Don't change the subject, Toby. Apparently, the vicar's neighbour saw a small boy coming out of the vicarage garden last night, wearing an orange and white stripy t-shirt. That's fake news, Grandpa. Fake news? Yep, fake news. I wouldn't take any notice of that at all. Toby, enough of this fake news nonsense. I want you to be honest with me now. Have you been helping yourself to the vicar's figs? Uh, 
Well. So, it is either yes or no, Toby. I don't want any white lies. Fingers crossed behind your back or fake news. I want the truth. Uh, I did take the fix, Grandpa. And I'm feeling rather bad about it. Thank you for telling me the truth. Now, you know that taking the Vickers figs is wrong, don't you? I do, Grandpa, but I just couldn't resist them. Well, you'd better go around and you can apologise to Sue for taking them. Oh, all right, Grandpa. But what I really want you to do is to learn from our little chat today that lying is never the right thing for a Jesus follower to do. Jesus wants us to be people of the truth, just like he is. Well, I'll try to be truthful, Grandpa. Well done, Toby. You know that lying really spoils your relationships. It didn't feel very nice when you were lying to me earlier, and it has made your mother very upset. Well, I'm sorry, Grandpa. I love you and my mum very much. I love you too, Toby. Now, go get yourself ready, and we'll make a quick visit to the Vickers. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. Just one thing before we go. Mum said to me earlier that Mr Long down the road has suggested that she send me to boarding school. Really? Yes, Grandpa, and that's not fake news. Well, thank you, Toby and Grandpa. There's always lots to learn from your lives. Well, let's open our hearts, continue to open our hearts in worship and pray, pray this prayer of preparation. Not sure what sort of week that you have had, but uh, as we come to worship God, it's often good to just give those things over to him so that as we worship, we are free to worship him in spirit and in truth without those burdens in our hearts. So let's pray this prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to open the Bible together, and Jacqueline is going to bring this reading to us. Reading today from Acts chapter 10, verses 9 to 23. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up onto the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again, a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now, get up, go down, and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house 
and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. We're going to hand over to Beck now as she brings God's word to us. Thanks, Beck. Hi, everyone. My name's Beck. Um, it's my pleasure to work at Long Beach Anglican Parish, and this is my study. I've told a lot of people that I quite like books, and I've got this bookshelf over here that's pretty full, and that bookshelf over there that you can't see, which is also pretty full. Um, but yeah, I've had a bit of a cold, so I just thought it was better to stay at home. So I have to say thank you to all of the people that participated in last week's video. Um, all the different snippets and all those people that were willing to be vulnerable, thank you. Um, it was a great encouragement to me personally to hear how your faith had grown during the pandemic and the way that you were able to see God at work in the world. Um, and I hope that it was a great encouragement for everyone who has watched over the last week. Um, yeah, and I thought it was kind of a lovely thing that last week was all about our faith and today's passage from Acts 10 is all about, um, or actually the entire chapter of Acts 10 is about the faith journey of Cornelius and the deepening of Peter's faith and their willingness to do God's work in the world. Um, it, it was, I thought it was one of those beautiful things where you see God at work. Um, yeah, so let's pray and then let's jump straight into Acts 10. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the way that you work in our world. I thank you so much for the faith of everyone around us um, and the way that we grow and deepen our relationship with you no matter what is going on in the wider world. Um, yeah, Father God, I pray that today as I share the message that your spirit works within me, that my words become your words and that they are an encouragement to the people that are watching this video. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the love, for your love and for the gift of your son, Jesus. Amen. So quite often when I'm prepping for sermons or studying, I quite often have music in the background. And usually, depending on what it is, it's classical music or kind of acoustic worship songs. Um, but this week I chose to listen to some country music and I quite like country music usually when I'm cleaning because it's usually upbeat, there's often a good storyline um, that's pretty inoffensive and I can pick out the melody and the different instruments that are playing. I quite enjoy it. Um, anyway, this week I decided to listen to that instead of the usual worship music as I was preparing. And a song came on the radio called God's Country by Blake Sheldon. And it's this little song about Georgia in America and how this farming community um, acknowledged that it was God's country, um, that it was beautiful and rugged and it was sometimes harsh and you had no choice but depend on God to provide for your family and or when he did provide, you gave back. Um, it was just this beautiful little song about how people in farming communities depend on God and how they have to acknowledge that there's a greater power that controls the environment. Um, yeah, so I thought that was kind of a sweet thing to happen when today's passage is all about inclusion and acknowledging that no matter your origin, your culture of origin, or um, the people, your place in society, or the people that you surround yourself with, everybody, everybody is included in God's kingdom. And God wants to be in a loving relationship with all of them. Um, so that was a sweet kind of segue, I thought, into what I was studying, and I thought I would share it. Um, because that is kind of the point of this passage is that it challenged the biases of the people that Peter was surrounding himself with to be more inclusive. 
So before we kind of get into the Bible, and every time that I do this, it's because I've got my Bible in front of me. Um, yeah, so let's have a little quick chat about the beginning of Acts 10, which is verses 1 to 8. It's going to be quick because, yeah, we're not actually meant to be focusing on that. But it's important to talk about Cornelius because he has a big impact on what happens to Peter in verses 9 to 23. So verses 1 to 8 talks about this chap called Cornelius in Caesarea. And Cornelius is a bit of an interesting character because he is a Gentile. Um, a Gentile was anybody that was not a part of the Jewish community. Um, they didn't know who God was originally as they were growing up. They had no idea of the impact of God on history um, and the way that God can work powerfully in the world. Um, Cornelius, though, is a little bit of a different chap. Um, he was a centurion, which means that he was a Roman, and that he led a hundred men in the Roman army. Um, his family were devout and God-fearing, important to know, because it means that they had already come into contact with the Jewish community, and at least Cornelius had an understanding of who God was, the power of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And he was seeking to live out a life that brought glory and honor to God um, without quite going the whole hog into Judaism. Um, it was unlikely that he was circumcised. Um, and so he was still able to kind of participate and understand the pagan world that he was a part of. Um, and he's a bit of an interesting character because he had power, he had secular authority because he was a Roman citizen, but he still had this working understanding of who God was. And he was a faithful man because it's as Cornelius is praying that an angel appears to him and says, go to Joppa and bring back the man named Simon who is called Peter. Um, and then Cornelius obeys. So he has an understanding that when he prays, God will act. And so he sends off some men to go and find Peter. Okay. And then we head into what verses 9 to 23 about Peter. And we already know a fair chunk of information, I guess, about Peter. We know that he was a Jewish man. We know that he had seen the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. And we know that he had been out evangelizing to people. Probably in the different communities, synagogues that he went to, because those people would have an understanding of who the Messiah was, who God was, and how Jesus would, well, he did fulfill the law. But there was already kind of like that starting point to talk about who God was, who Jesus was, and the impact that Jesus had on the community with them. So, yeah, um, it's also probably an important generalization, I guess, to talk about um, is the Jewish community and how it was kind of perceived and how they perceived themselves in a general sense. Um, they were, are God's chosen people. Um, they had an innate understanding of who God was, how he's um, acted throughout history, and they held themselves kind of morally separate from the rest of the communities that they found themselves in, whether it's in Babylon in the Old Testament or in Roman-occupied Middle East. Um, they held themselves separate. They refused to worship multiple gods, just the one God, and their understanding that there was one true God kind of bred a little bit of distrust between them and the authority of, of Rome because... The Romans incorporated so many different faiths, so many different pagan gods on the understanding that this god is like this god or this goddess is like this goddess. So therefore, they're probably the same goddess, just with different names or god with a different name. Um, the Jewish people and thus the Christian people are like, no, no, one god. We worship one true god, maker of heaven and earth. And that made everybody else go, mm, we don't know how much we trust you. Um, so there was this kind of division or tension between the two different communities um, that they were working in. And so we get to Peter and as he's 
building the new church, the new church, the early church had kind of this underlying bias or practices from Judaism. They were Jewish people. They saw Jesus as the fulfillment of the law. So they didn't stop necessarily practicing some of the traditions or some of the rituals, I guess, that came from Judaism. Um, and they held tightly to those um, as a community in the very first little while of the early church. Um, yeah. But this is where it gets interesting. This is where God starts to challenge those two very separate communities about how their faith should bring them together regardless of their starting point in life, I guess. So let's let's jump into verses 9 to 23 with a little bit more um, intention. So the first thing we find out is that Peter's gone to the roof to pray. So this tells us a little bit about Peter's faith. We know that he places great importance on his personal relationship with God. Um, he's gone, he's separated himself from the household and there would have been a number of people in there. So he could have some alone time with God. And we see Jesus doing this in various points throughout his ministry. He'll separate himself, calm down in the presence of God and have a revelation or a greater understanding of the next thing that God's going to ask him to do. And that's what we kind of see happening here with Peter. He's gone away from people and he gets a bit hungry. You know, we all do when we're praying sometimes. Um, and while he's kind of getting ready to go back down to the household, he has this vision and this vision of animals hanging out in a sheet and coming down three times has a lot of relevance to this conversation about incorporating people into the community. Although I do have to say, it always reminds me of when we were little and it would be summertime and mum had washed the sheets as you do. And we would always put our soft toys in them and pretend they were houses and things. So this image of animals coming down to me often reminds me of that. But it would have had a different significance to the people in the early church. Because it's full of all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. And then a voice tells Peter, get up, kill and eat. Now this would have shocked our... Peter just a little bit um, because a part of being Jewish, a part of staying separate from the wider community was that they had very specific food laws that they had to follow. It was one of the things that separated them from the pagans around them to show the rest of the world that they were God's people. So that's how come we get this like sense of outrage from Peter in verse 14. Surely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. This, this indignation, I guess, that, oh, no, I couldn't do that to God, um, shows how important this was. Like, of all the things that Peter has seen and heard, the idea of eating these animals that would have been um, considered impure or unclean was, oh, that would have been gut-wrenching and kind of if... I don't, I don't even know what the equivalent would be for us... Um, I guess somebody coming in and saying we can't have a church at the cross, uh, bleh, a cross at the church. We go, um, excuse me? No, no. Um, and that's kind of what Peter's doing here is, I'm sorry, you want me to eat pork? No, no. That's not what we do or how we do things. But this is where the incorporation of community becomes very apparent in verses 15. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. So this is God telling Peter, nah, that's done. That's a part of the law that Jesus came, he fulfilled. We're done with that. You do not need to practice that anymore. It's done. We don't need to do it. Um, and this repetition happens three times. Okay, The sheet comes up, goes down, comes up, goes down. And each time God tells Peter, it's okay. Do not call anything that's impure. Eat bacon. No. <laughs> um, but at the same time, yeah, you can do that now. Um, and that coming up and down, up and down three times is actually kind of important. 
because it states that it's not just Peter saying, yes, we need to go out and convert the Gentiles, but the reader would have known that this was something given by God, that up and down three times was a sign of the Trinity at work. You know, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who was very active at the day, um, was was behind this. It wasn't just Peter having some fancy notion. It was God saying, no, this is what we're doing. Okay. And then Peter's like left kind of in shock about this. Like, what is this? All of a sudden we're allowed to eat everything? Why? Why is this important? How is this going? And then Peter was talk- thinking about this when the spirit came back to him. Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up, go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So Peter goes down. He's an obedient, faithful man. He goes down. And he says, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? And we have come from Cornelius the Centurion. He's a righteous, God-fearing man who is respected by all Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the man into the house as his guests. And then what comes after verse 23 is Peter's engagement with Cornelius, how he shares the word with Cornelius and his entire household and all of his friends and family become Christian, understand who God is, and it changes their whole perspective. Um, yeah, but for me, there's so much in this first, this these verses 9 to 23 that we can't really take for granted. So I think the first thing that we have to acknowledge is the power of prayer in this passage. Um, in all of chapter 10, Cornelius faithful praying to God. Peter faithful praying to God. The thing that these two men have in common, above and beyond their different communities, is that God is their centre. Um, God is the thing that's bringing them together. The spirit at work in their lives is bringing them together. Okay. Um, and from that, great things happen. The Holy Spirit works in them. They see visions. They see an angel. And then both men are obedient. Cornelius had no idea whether Peter was going to show up or participate in this conversation to deepen his faith. He had no idea. Um, Peter, though, I would have been more nervous for Peter than I would have been for Cornelius because Cornelius had an understanding of who God was, but he had the power and the might of the Roman Empire behind him. Poor Peter. Peter's convicted by God. He's got his faith. But downstairs there are two Roman soldiers who had just killed Jesus who had been persecuting Christians, coming down and asking for you to go away from your community to a house in Caesarea where there's a man who wants to talk about Jesus. The human part of Peter and his friends must have been a little bit like, um, there are some, we have some concerns about this, but Peter was like, no, 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 I'm going. Jesus has said this is going to be okay. The spirit has been at work. He says this is okay. And so this passage is also important because of that. It, the idea that Gentiles were to become a part of the church was a powerful thing. Um, Pardon me. <coughs> um, yeah, it was a powerful thing. This passage has been used um, kind of in the early church as the point where it's okay to invite Gentiles into the community. If this hadn't have happened, the tension that we see in the other letters of the epistles where there are questions about churches and conflict in churches about circumcision, about what people can eat and can't eat, um, it would have continued to create tension in the early church. Whereas this passage is saying, no, these are not things that we need to worry about. Okay. God's got this. God has said that it is time to spread out and to share God's good news with the people, no matter where they are, no matter who they are. So yeah, that's kind of like some of the things that stood out to me from this passage. And I think as I look at this, they're men's individual relationships with God, the way that they were obedient to him and the changes that 
that obedience and seeing God at work in them to change the world is really a powerful thing. Like Cornelius had a lot of sway. It was people like Peter who had the courage to go and tell the other people about God What is what grew the church. And the church grew exponentially in the first 300 years. Um, it was inclusive. It didn't matter where you were, what you had believed. There was a time when you didn't know God and now there is a time that do- you do. And now, from now, you change how you live your life. That was a powerful thing. Um, yeah, so I guess my challenge to you, my encouragement to you is this week is for you to consider how you're listening for God's voice. How are you setting aside time to experience God's love for you? Um, Both Peter and Cornelius set aside time and they listened to God. Um, They were aware of the spirit working in their lives. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it super easy to get distracted during prayer. Um, I find it really easy to ask for a lot of things and then go on with my day. Um, But I have to remind myself that there is a time for that, but there's also a time for God to um, speak into my life. Um, And that's actually the powerful part. Um, It's in those quiet times when I listen to God that he challenges my behavior. He challenges the bias and um, poor behavior um, in those moments. Um, Much like he challenges Peter's perception of food. And separation of community um, and it grows me um, so and it makes me a better person and more willing to see God at work and to be obedient to him so I think that's something that we can all take a little bit from from this passage um, that um, it's important for us to spend time listening to God However, that is for you, but to actually stop and listen um, and then to be obedient. Like it's not easy to change behavior. It's not easy to welcome people into our lives that we might find are a bit hard or will challenge our perceptions and understanding of who God's called us to be. Um, But that's what this passage is encouraging us to do, because when we do, amazing things happen, like Peter and Cornelius meeting, talking to each other growing their faith Um, because Cornelius had that conversation with Peter a whole like huge family and people group came to understand who God was who the gift and the gift of Jesus Peter walked away from this encounter um, having a better understanding of God's intention for evangelism that it wasn't just um, to Jewish people but the church was to encompass everybody um, and that people shouldn't be held back by the traditions or um, the old ways, I guess, so long as they are listening for God's voice and they are incorporating his word and his um, revelation into their day to day. So, yeah, I pray this week that that's what you do, is that you spend some moments with God listening to him, letting him talk into situations and potentially some behaviors that you're going to need to change in order to be obedient Um, but when you do those things ah, you become more than what you were before you challenged those behaviors and the way that you see God at work Um, yeah so let's pray Um, yeah heavenly father I thank you so much that you are always growing us you are always changing us to be more who you wanted us to be Um, Yeah, Father God, you are a good God and you're a great God and you don't ever let us sit stagnant or comfortable in our faith. Um, You support and encourage us and then encourage us to share our faith and knowledge with the world around us. So yeah, Father God, I pray that you help us to be more inclusive and courageous in sharing your message with the wider world this week. Amen. All right, guys, um, it was nice chatting. Um, Hopefully I'll see you next week or the week after. Bye.
Thanks, Vic, for that. We're going to join together in saying the Apostles Creed, to, the Apostles Creed together, what we believe as a church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And would you like to join us as we sing this wonderful song written by John Luther? I let the Son of God inform us. And we really need that at this time. <laughs> Spirit and His love, let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you, and His Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, to a time of confession. So let's pray this prayer together. In penitence and faith, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
It's always wonderful to know that we are forgiven. So listen to these words, assuring you of that. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon us and set us free from all our sins, strengthen us to do his will and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> Amen. And let's continue in our prayers. I invite, invite you to join with me praying for our church and our world. Holy God, bless our lives, sanctify us, and in your way, grant us our heart's desire. Anoint us with your grace, that what we desire is also what you desire. Help us to understand that our heart's true desire is the love of you. May the love of Christ urge us on. May we walk by faith. Thank you, God, for all our blessings. Holy God, bless those who govern. Bless the leaders of nations, countries, towns and cities, and those who lead in all manner, social, political and religious. Bless us all. Fill the hearts of all with your wisdom. Guide us in the way of justice and integrity for all. Guide us to walk by faith. Holy God, tend to those who suffer in mind, body and spirit. Tend to the tired, the dying, the poor and the hungry. Help us to follow the love of Christ, a love which urges us on. Help us to seek and serve Christ in others, bringing forth a new creation. Holy God, we ask all this in the name of Christ, our Redeemer. Holy God, we ask all this by the Holy Spirit who activates your love in us. Holy God, we ask all this that your love may be like seed scattered, manifesting in small and unexpected ways the greatness of you. May your love take root in our lives and may we walk by faith. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Jacqueline. And you might like to have your biscuit and your glass or your drink as we share in this act of spiritual communion together. <clears throat> Jesus said, Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. My most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And let us eat and drink together in remembrance that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Mm -hmm. 
and let's continue in prayer. Oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love. Revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to be his witnesses in our community and through our lives. And so let's sing this song, send us out in the power of your spirit and may this be our prayer today. Send us out in the power of spirit, shine the light in the way we live. Send us out in the power of your spirit, as we receive, may we freely give. Send us out, send us out, send us out for your glory. Let all we do be praise to you. Send us out for your glory. Now the notice is uh, we are meeting as parish council on the 13th. Now, sorry, I've had to change. I'll explain uh, why later. But um, so just continue to pray for the leadership team as we make decisions about what is going to happen over the next little while. <clears throat> also, it is Beck Feet and Bees' birthday. Today? Oh, no, on the 10th. Oh. So, uh, and it's also uh, Nick Russian's birthday uh, on the 10th as well. And it's my twin brother and sister's birthday on Monday. So they're John and Janine, so there's Nick and there's Beck. So, John, yes, so we've got four to sing happy birthday to. I'd also, before we do that, I would... Um, I'd like to thank everybody. As most of you will know, my brother um, died on Wednesday and he was very special to me. And some of you met him when he came over and was at lunch church and, and at other things. And he had a love for Jesus. And so I'm at peace knowing where he is. He's in the arms of Jesus. And as we have prayed for him over many, many months, and some of you, uh, if you're watching from other churches that I've been at, you've been praying for him for a few years. He was ill for over eight years, um, but with cancer for two. And he actually asked me to thank you for all of your prayers and your love and your support. So, And I want to say the same. It's been lovely, the messages that I've got and your care I that have just uh, been wonderful and upheld me through this time. So... Thank you to everybody. And his service is going to be going to be on Monday. So, and it is going to be a celebration of a wonderful life. And he had a wonderful sense of humour, and he um, and he was very special to me. So, thank you again. Well, let's sing. 
Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Don't you need a big and neat? Happy birthday to you. May Jesus bless you. May Jesus bless you. that I'll finish with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful week and go empowered to go to all of the ends of the world in your prayers and in those who we meet on the streets, <clears throat> telling them the good news about Jesus.